In this presentation, we will generate and analyze an income statement, which is one of the fundamental financial statement reports, the primary two being the balance sheet and the income statement. Let's zoom into it with zero. Here we are in our demo company dashboard within zero. We're going to open up our two main reports, that being the balance sheet and the income statement. So I'm going to be selecting the accounting drop down. Let's open the balance sheet first. We are focusing in on the income statement. But I want to open them both up because, of course, these are our two major financial statements. So it's good to be able to bounce back and forth between them as we go. We're going to be right-clicking on the tab up top, and we're going to be duplicating that balance sheet. So it's going to be on the on the right, then go back to the left. Then we're going to open up the uh, income statement by going to the accounts uh, accounting drop-down, then selecting the income statement. And as it pulls up or when it pulls up, we're going to be right clicking on it and I'm going to duplicate that tab. That's going to be the form we're going to be concentrating in on. Got the balance sheet to the right. If we want to look at any other kind of thing, we're going to do that on the left. Here we are in the income statement. Now I'm going to put the income statement as of uh, the last year. So I want to look at the, uh, the last financial year, 2019, because the data in the system seems to be uh, more appropriate for that year. It's a, it's a better set of data to, to look at. So the income statement, we'll go through the major components. Note that anytime you open up a report, you can hold down control and zoom in just a bit. So I'm gonna hold down control and scroll up on the keyboard. I like to bring it up to that 125 is about as, as uh, large as I can go. So we're gonna be in here. Now the major components of the income statement, or, or let's start at the top here. We have the name, it's gonna be the income statement. Note that if you're using some other type of software, notably QuickBooks, they're gonna call it a profit and loss report. So the income statement is actually the more standard type of name. If you're, if you're talking to someone that's learning financial accounting or if you have the financial accounting background and you're learning financial accounting, you call it an income statement typically. So if you're, if you're going from financial accounting and then you talk to someone that's from like QuickBooks or some other accounting software, they name it a profit and loss. That's going to strike you as a little bit strange. Uh, but but zero here keep, has kind of the more traditional name. So just note that when you learn accounting, you have to learn one the financial accounting and know who you're going to talk to and then two, kind of the software lingo to get around and navigate the software and when you get around and navigate in the software sometimes they adjust other other types of names as well so for example the balance sheet and the income statement are both under reports as well and that used to strike me as kind of sounding funny as well because those aren't i don't think of them as reports or i used to not think of them as a report i think of them as the financial statements the core thing and then the reports would be somehow summarizing or giving more detail about them that's how i would that's how i envision things here but obviously when you're designing the software it's going to be under uh the reports so just note that if you talk to other people and they call it a profit and loss or if you're comparing the software to somebody else and you have some other software like QuickBooks, you're going to be comparing it to a profit and loss report. Uh, if you wanted to change the name up top to a P&L or profit and loss or whatnot, you can do so up top. And that's one of the customization things that you can do for it. Then, of course, we have the name. Another notable feature or one of the big notable features here is it's for the year ended. Now, what that means is there's a beginning and ending time period. Also note that this, once again, is the more formal way to kind of uh, represent this terminology. So, for example, you could say this is for the period of January 1st, 2019 to December 31st, 2019, labeling the beginning and end. In some ways, that's more descriptive because it, it's very definite. You can say, hey, that's what it is. It's got a beginning time period and an ending time period. However, the traditional way that you would see this would typically be for the year ended. That's the terminology that's usually used in, in uh, you know, financial accounting. And so, and normally you would have the time periods being for a year, for a month, for a quarter uh, would be the normal kind of months or transactions. And you'd have those basically up top here that you can choose those. But the main key is if you go back to the balance sheet, remember, this is as of a point in time. There's no range. It just says as of the income statement, on the other hand, says for the year ended, meaning it has a beginning and ending period. That means that this is a performance report. And most reports are. They're kind of performance reports, meaning how did we do over time? It's kind of like if we ran a race. You need to know, you know, how long did it take? You need time to see what's happening as opposed to if you're looking at the balance sheet you're just saying where are we standing at this point in time just like where am i where am i at at this point in time i'm sitting here talking into it right that's a that's a different type of thing so this is a performance income statement performance report that means up top in the data input we have a beginning and ending date once again on the balance sheet we did not we only had one date here 
So on the income statement, we have a beginning and ending date. All right, so that's gonna be the major component. If we go down to the income statement, I want you to think of the income statement as primarily having just two kind of accounts primarily, and then we're gonna have a kind of sub accounts within there. Those being income, the income type of accounts, revenue, and then expense type of accounts, which we could break into subcategories such as cost of goods sold and expenses. But in essence, we have income, you know, the revenue, things we're generating, that's the goal of the business from an accounting standpoint to generate revenue. And then we had the things that we had to use or expend during the time period in order to help us to generate that revenue, those being expenses. Now we can then break out the expenses into more subcategories such as cost of goods sold and put a subcategory of gross profit. But in essence, you have two, two things going on, revenue and then everything else that we needed to generate in order to, to make the revenue. Now, if we go back to the first tab here and we go to the accounting dropdown and you take a look at the chart of accounts, just realize that you, you need to understand this just like we did on the balance sheet whenever you make a new account. The most common account that you're going to be making when you start to enter data into the system are going to be expenses. So notice if I look at the account types here and I scroll down, these are the account types. Which one has the most accounts? The expenses because that's all the stuff we spend money on. The thing we do, the thing we do is gonna be, we only do one or two things because we specialize as a business. We're really good at one or two things and everything else we do, we, we pay someone else to do. Those are all the expenses. Therefore, most of the time when you spend money and you have to make a new account possibly for that, it's gonna be an expense type of account. That's on the income statement. So, so note to that, uh, but you, you want to be very aware of these, of these type of accounts. So you're not going to be making oftentimes too many more revenue accounts because note, there's only three here because most companies specialize in what they do. Therefore only have a few revenue accounts. There's some exceptions you like, you like, again, if you're doing, uh, you know, Amazon marketing or something like that, affiliate marketing, and you're getting commissions from Amazon and other affiliate programs and this and that, and you wanted to to track uh, your your income by account and by the, you know a bunch of different types of revenue sources that might be an occasion, but most most of the time you have very few revenue accounts. You specialize in what you're doing and you break out the more detail by by customer, for example, or by item that you sell, uh, itemizing in that way rather than having a bunch of, of accounts on the income statement. And then when you make new accounts, it's usually when you're spending money and you want to categorize into new categorizations for the expending those being the expenses. All right, back to the income statement. Now, now we have, so we have revenue up top. If we sell goods, it's also often called sales. We might call it something else. If we do service, it might be called fees earned. We might just call it income. We might call it revenue, but it's going to be a, a revenue line item. If you sell things like goods inventory, we often use the term sales. Uh, for for goods that are sold is, is kind of customary. Then if you sell things, you'll, you may have cost of goods sold, that being the cost of the things you sold, the cost of the inventory that you consumed in order to help you generate revenue because you gave away the inventory in order to generate the revenue. So cost of goods sold is huge for companies that have inventory. For companies that do not have inventory, you will not have any cost of goods sold. Because cost of goods sold and the relation to the thing we're selling that, that generates revenue is so important, we often then have another subcategory, that being the gross profit, which is simply the income minus the cost of goods sold. So this is just a subcategory on the way down to net income, which is really just revenue minus expenses. And then we have the other expenses, which we're going to call operating expenses. This is where all, you know, all the other expenses are going to go in our traditional kind of uh, income statement report. And you'll notice here that it's in order by uh, account. So basically uh, by the, the name of the account, not by the amount. But note that we can change that as we saw in the balance sheet. You can go in, go in and customize that. And you could say, hey, I, I want my most important accounts up top. So perhaps you want something like, where's my, my biggest ones, like the rent. You may want that and the online item, you know, right under advertising. Advertising's at number one, just happened to be spelled, you know, with an A and B, their number one expense. But you might want dues and subscriptions up there. You might want the rent up there. You might want to organize this in, in, a, in a fashion that the, the more relevant accounts are up top, no matter what the order of the spelling. And you can do that with the, the editing tab, which is which is nice. You can't do that as much with um, QuickBooks, although you can edit within each section by by the account totals. So you could set, have the account totals, but here you can do any kind of ordering that you want by, by using that customization uh, field. We then get down to the, uh, op the total operating expenses, which are gonna be all those expenses, and then the operating income. Operating income being, of course, the gross profit, the place we left off last time, income minus the cost of goods sold, gross profit minus 
the operating the uh, total operating expenses gives us the operating income which in this case is the same as the net income so that's going to be the the basic layout of the income statement uh, remember we're performing this is time this is how we did over the last year this number then will tie into the balance sheet so if we go back over to the balance sheet and look for that six eight six two ten and we go to the balance sheet as of december end and go down there's the six eight six two ten now again this isn't traditional to have that in the balance sheet because usually it would be just included in retained earnings and it will roll into retained earnings later but it gives us a clue of, of how the income statement relates to the balance sheet so you want to kind of think of that and have that piece in the balance sheet where we stand as of a point in time as of this point in time and i think it's easiest to relate this to the cash account like if i have eleven thousand seven seven three thirteen in cash as of December 31st, 2019, it is what it is. Well, how did I get there? How did I get to this point in time? Same question with the equity down here, right? If I have total equity, assets minus liabilities, that's the value of the company, you can think, of 7229.77 on a book basis, value of the company on a book basis. If that's what I have in equity, assets minus liability, the value of the company at this point in time, how did I get there? Well, I could go one year back, right? One year back. Well, last year, this is what happened. Last year, we had revenue minus expenses of 6,862.10. Is that the whole story? No, we've been in business for 10 years, you know, and there were money got put into the company possibly in other way, whatever, whatever. But last year, that's what happened, right? If you want more detail than that, we can go to you after that. Just, just like, how did I end up here talking into the microphone here? How did that happen? Well, I woke up today and I ate breakfast and whatnot. Is that the whole story? No, I can go back, you know, further than that, <laughs> you know, and we can and we can go further. So that's the same relationship between the income statement and the balance sheet. Balance sheet, where we are at this point in time, it, it is what it is. However far back you want to go, a lot of things took place to get to this point in time. It is what it is. If you want part of a story as to how we got to here, well, we can go one year back and we can make the income statement showing the activity, the revenue we generated last year and the expenses that we incurred in order to help us generate that revenue last year to help us to get to this net income which is included in what we currently have at this point in time which is represented by the equity section of the balance sheet all right let's go ahead and print this out we're going to do the same thing here we're going to be printing these reports as we go and just practice basically putting these reports into a format that we can provide to somebody else so I'm going to go ahead and ex and export this. I'm going to print it as a uh, PDF file first. So we're going to make it as a PDF file. And I'm just going to call this uh, Section 3 folder. I'm going to put it in a folder that's called Section 3. And so I'm going to open up my Section 3 folder. And I'm just going to drag that in there. So we'll drag that into the Section 3 folder as our first uh, report on the income statement section. It didn't go. It didn't go in there. Let's try it again. I'm going to drag it into my income section three folder. And so there it is. Then I'm going to rename it. I'm going to right click and rename it. I'm going to call it an income statement. So that's one way we can give it to somebody else. I'm also going to export it as a Excel sheet. So we'll export it as Excel. It's going to open up in that similar fashion, which is nice. I'm simply going to drag that over to my folder that I want to put it in. So that same folder. That I have it in there. Maybe I'm not giving it enough time to like fully. Oh, that one worked. Okay. And then I'm going to rename that one. And I'm going to say rename. This one I'm going to call income statement reports. Because we're going to put multiple reports in here as we go through variants of this income statement. And then if we were to open up that report. And just take a look at what the Excel document looks like. I'm going to enable editing. Because I want to I wanna edit it. And I have to enable the editing to do so. So there is that. Now, again, I would probably make this another report because I like to see the grid lines. And, and so I'm just going to make it another report and just see what it would look like if I copy the whole thing over because that's what we're going to do later. I'm going to take this whole thing and just like we've seen in the past, take the triangle, copy it, put this on the sheet two and paste it. Got to be an A1 to do so. There it is. I'm going to bring this back up to 150 so we can so it's big. So there's that. You might have to do some formatting on the name, which might include just basically expanding the cell like that to make it print right. And then I'm going to call this the... Now, I can't make it the same name or it's going to give me an error if I call this income statement, right? It's going to give me an error. So I'd have to change the name on one or the other. 
but I'm just going to shorten it st statement something like that and then in this one I, I'm going to delete probably later I'll keep it there for now and so that's what I'm going to do now when I have multiple different reports then I'm going to use this one to make be able to print multiple reports from one excel file so I don't have to collate it and so that uh, we can attach something with one pdf file with multiple reports on it and we'll see that as we've done in the past as we go for the income statement reports.